they're here. The classroom videos so many of you asked for are now available for anyone wanting to rebuild and modify a General Motors 480E transmission. Hi, I'm Jimmy Williams, your humble transmission bench instructor, and I want to announce I finished putting together a video classroom I originally didn't want to make. Encouragement from viewers like you changed my mind. It took four months and a lot of work, but I finally made them anyway. It's an advanced series 4L80E class. I call it advanced not because it's any harder than any of the other projects we've worked on together, but because it's a little longer, over eight hours, and includes additional instruction on how to install a high-performance reprogramming kit. Again, because of the high production cost and unknown viewer demand, I almost decided not to make this one. In the past, I've made instructional videos on very popular transmissions for free, but I need some help funding this one. The 4L80E video classroom can be viewed from a USB drive or as a pay-per-view rental. Either format is available at the transmissionbench.com website. The cost is very reasonable and as always, the lessons on a USB drive are free with the purchase of any Deluxe Super Kit. I believe anyone can build a great 4L80E themselves. If you want the toughest and at your option the hardest, even brutal shifting, extreme performance 4L80E, this classroom will help you make it happen. In order for you to see and consider what's involved in a 4L80E rebuilding project before making any financial commitment, please watch the following sample lessons. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the Transmission Bench Advanced Series 4L80E Classroom. I'm Jimmy Williams, your instructor, and I can't wait to take you inside of this incredible, easy to work on General Motors automatic transmission. I know the term automatic transmission can sound intimidating, but don't let it stop you from learning how to rebuild and modify this amazing machine. It's not hard at all. Here's a little secret. You don't have to know why it works. You don't have to understand how fluid flows through all of the passages in the valve body. All you really need to learn is how to take it apart, recognize problems in order to fix them, and how to put it back together. In other words, this class is not about complicated hydraulic or electronic theory. It's about easy to learn assembly procedure. Again, it's not a skill you can't learn. If you've worked on other areas of a vehicle, you can fix a foil ADE. You can make it work like it's supposed to and even modify it to shift like you want it to. Later on, during the reassembly part of this classroom, you'll have the option to make modifications using a very popular high-performance reprogramming kit. In the next few hours, we'll work on it step-by-step -step together. The video classroom lessons have been arranged to cover one or two areas of the transmission at a time. You can learn at your own pace by starting, stopping, or pausing the videos at your convenience. I assume that you have no prior experience working on a transmission and start you off on a beginner's level. During part one of the class, we'll discuss a work area arrangement, tools you'll need, and even how to clean parts. Later, in part two, I'll introduce you to a rebuilding kit and other replacement parts, as well as the reprogramming kit. The only prerequisites for this class are, one, that you have the transmission out of the vehicle and onto a suitable work surface, and two, 
that the transmission has been diagnosed with a definite internal problem. By the end of the class, we will have disassembled, discovered problems, discussed solutions, and finally completely rebuilt a like new 4L80E. And if you elect to build a performance version, you'll have one of the toughest, quickest, and hardest shifting transmissions on the planet. As I said in the beginning, I can't wait to get started and I hope you'll join me in 4L80E class, part one, lesson one. Hello, welcome back. This is 4L80E class, part one, lesson one. I want to introduce you to the star of our show. I think she's gorgeous. This cutie is a 4L80E which was paired to a six liter engine in a 2003 Chevy 2500 series pickup. She didn't always look this good. When I found her a few months ago, she looked pretty rough. As a matter of fact, this is what she looked like when I found her languishing, unloved, and abandoned in an Atlanta junkyard. I asked her if she wanted to be in pictures, and she said, sure. So I took her back to the studio. After a visit to the wardrobe and makeup department, she cleaned up pretty well. Unfortunately, she still has issues, internal damage. I have taken this transmission apart, cleaned everything, and then reassembled it without fluid, but with serious mechanical problems still present for us to discover, talk about, and fix. Our celebrity 4L80E needs an operation, and we're going to perform surgery together in order to restore her back to health. I'll also explain the optional installation of a high-performance reprogramming kit in order to modify her behavior. She'll go from being a mild-mannered but firm-shifting sweetie to a vicious, brutal-shifting beast. It'll be up to you. The video classroom lessons are divided into two parts. Part one is about setting up an ideal work area, what tools you will need, how to clean parts, and finally, how to disassemble the transmission. In part two, I'll introduce you to a rebuilding kit, other replacement parts, details of the reprogramming kit, and of course, the complete reassembly of the transmission. The goals of this lesson are to simply introduce you to a practical work area, tools you will need, and safety precautions. I want to begin by showing you the overall setup I'll be working in so that you can duplicate it if you want to. I have the transmission to disassemble on one bench and another separate two and a half by four foot bench to set parts on as I remove them from the case. I put poster board down in order to make it easier for you to see them. I'll also use a homemade stand to support the case in an upright position as I work on the main drivetrain. Now I'll jump forward in time for a minute or two so that you can see how my benches will look after the transmission has been partially disassembled. This is how my benches will look at the end of part one. Except for the parking mechanism, nothing remains in the case. Parts and subassemblies have been removed and placed neatly onto another bench where they can remain organized and undisturbed. Now let's take a look at the tools we'll need for this project. You won't need hard to find or expensive tools to work on a 4L80E. Sure, there are tools specifically designed for working on transmissions, and while they are nice to have, they're not absolutely necessary. 
These are the only hand tools that you really need. You'll use a hammer, even a claw hammer is fine, various flat blade screwdrivers, half inch, three eighths, and quarter inch drive ratchets, extensions, quarter inch to three eighths, and three eighths to half inch adapters, eight, 10, 13, 15, and 19 millimeter sockets, a one and a quarter inch 12 point socket, T27 and T40 Torx bits, a 12 point 3 eighths drive socket, 15 millimeter open end wrench, a flat file, various snap ring pliers, needle nose pliers, locking pliers, a magnetic pickup tool, feeler gauge set, and an inch pounds torque wrench. We will not be using any power tools such as air ratchets or impact guns. You'll need a source of compressed air in order to blow dry parts and to perform pressure tests on clutch packs. If you don't have an air compressor, a simple air tank and an adjustable regulator like this setup will work fine. Here is a unique tool used in the transmission repair industry. It's called a foot press. I don't expect you to have access to one, but you will need a similar device in order to safely compress the return spring cages found in the Ford and direct clutch drums of the 4L80E transmission. These drums must be disassembled in order to replace piston lip seals or the entire piston in later models. I'll show you how it works and then we'll discuss a substitute device. For example, I'll place the direct clutch drum onto the press like so adjust the circular feet to fit the diameter of the return spring retainer, insert this pin into an appropriate hole for height adjustment, and finally push down a lever with one foot to compress the spring cage. Now a snap ring can be removed with snap ring pliers. As I lift my foot, the spring cage expands to release tension. Now let's look at an alternative. This is a homebrew wooden press you can easily make from two befores. I call it the Squeeze-O-Matic. It's a very low cost device I originally introduced and used in a video classroom of the Ford 4R70W transmission. Even though the downward pressure needed to compress the spring cages of the 4L80E drums is much higher than needed on the Ford transmission, this homemade press will do the job. The lever has a 3 to 1 ratio and as you can see, the spring cage can be depressed with one hand. I'll show you how to build it for about $12 in a later lesson. Another easy to build tool is a stand to support the transmission during teardown and reassembly. The 4L80E is normally assembled with the case in an upright position. It should be about two feet off of the floor on a fixture which will allow the output shaft to protrude through it. Like the press, this stand can be made from 2 befores for a few dollars. I'll describe how to make it and its dimensions later. 
At some point after teardown, you will need to clean everything, and I want to spend a little time explaining how to do this without damage to parts or personal injury. My best tip is this. Don't clean anything until the transmission is disassembled. In other words, regardless of how grimy and nasty the transmission is after removal from the vehicle, avoid the temptation to blast it with a pressure washer or to take it to the car wash. High pressure water and detergent can and usually will be injected past the seals on electronic components such as the range selector switch and sensors. Oxidation can be a problem too. Water on the surface of the pump, input shaft, and other bare steel parts will quickly rust them. All of the internal parts and any electronic parts should only be cleaned with a petroleum-based product such as mineral spirits after disassembly. Only the bare, empty aluminum case and extension housing can be cleaned with water and detergent. I use a small tank like this one with about a half a gallon of mineral spirits, sometimes labeled paint thinner, along with a stiff bristle brush to clean internal and electronic parts. Gasoline, kerosene, paint reducer, and other products such as acetone or alcohol should never be used. They're either too harsh or too flammable. I always wear gloves to protect my hands from chemicals and safety glasses to protect my eyes from splashing. As a side note, I also like to keep a pad and pen handy to make notes about parts as I inspect them during cleaning. One last point in this lesson and the most important one of this entire project. Work safely. Protect yourself from injury. Transmission repair can be hazardous. First of all, make sure that your work surface can support the weight of the 4L80E. This is a heavy transmission. It also has dangerous razor sharp edges in the valve body and other areas of the case. Have mechanics or thick leather gloves close by to protect your hands, fingers, and wrists from laceration. Finally, remember to wear eye protection. Starting with the next lesson, you will be required to wear safety glasses for the rest of this video classroom project. That's it for lesson one. Join me in part one, lesson two, and we'll begin the disassembly. It's great to have you back. This is 4L80E class, part one, lesson three. If you recall, in our last lesson, we discussed transmission identification and case changes over the years. We also began transmission disassembly by removing a few external parts. We then positioned the case upside down for access to the valve body area. In this lesson and lesson four, we'll continue our teardown by removing the bottom pan as well as assemblies found beneath it, such as the filter, wiring harness, valve body, reverse servo, and selector shaft components. Let's get back to work by removing the 17 bolts which fasten the pan to the case. You'll need a six point 10 millimeter socket along with a short extension and ratchet.
place the bolts into the small box where we placed the six extension housing bolts earlier in lesson two. These are the only two groups of bolts to be put into this box. I like to keep them together because both types of bolts are used outside of the case and because the pan bolts look very similar but are not the same as six bolts we'll remove later which attach the reverse servo cover. I'll put those in the other box to avoid getting them mixed up. Lift the pan up and off of the case. Turn it over. It is not unusual to find a black silt-like sediment in the bottom. Also note that a magnet should be present in this area. For now, don't attempt to clean the pan. Set it onto the parts bench as is. Set it in this area. If the pan gasket remained on the case, remove it now. If your transmission still has the factory installed reusable type like this one, save it to reinstall during reassembly. Set it onto the pan. Even if your transmission had a cork or other disposable material gasket, save it and place it onto the pan anyway. It's a good habit to save all of the old seals, gaskets, and O-rings, even if they are damaged until after the entire project is finished. You never know when you may need an old part to match it up with a new one. Removal of the filter is next. Before you do this, note which one of two types your model may have. There is one type of filter for a late deep style pan which looks like this one. These dimple like structures are actually to support the filter off of the bottom of the 1996 and later deep style pan. The other type of filter is used with a shallow style pan from 1991 until part of 1996 and looks like this example. Notice that it has no dimples. These two types of filters are not interchangeable. Here they are side by side for comparison. Note the different heights, years, and part numbers. Remove the filter by twisting it side to side while pulling it up and out. If the rubber seal, which is pressed into the case, is healthy, it should take considerable effort to do this. The seal in our demo transmission barely has a snug fit around the filter tube because heat and age have caused it to shrink and lose the original tight interference fit. It's not uncommon for the filter to be so loose that it simply falls out. I encounter this a lot and in my opinion is one of the main reasons for 4L80E transmission failure. It simply starves for fluid because the pump now pulls in a foamy mixture of air and liquid. This seal will be removed and replaced in a later lesson. Set the filter with the pan. Place it in this area as it normally would be if installed. I want to spend a few minutes introducing the components of this area so that you can become familiar with them. I'll begin with electronic components connected to the wiring harness. This large round gray cylinder like structure is called the electronic pressure control solenoid. Many people refer to it as its abbreviated name, EPC, for electronic pressure control. Another common name is force motor. Its function is to vary line pressure, which determines shift feel under varying conditions. There are two types depending upon year. The first type is for model years 
1991 through 2003 and has flat spade type connectors. For reference, it is item number D34435A. A second type used on 2004 and later models is different and has a barb type connector. The item number for it is D34435B. This is the TCC PWM solenoid. TCC PWM means torque converter clutch pulse width modulated. This solenoid is responsible for controlling the application of the clutch located inside of the torque converter. It is item number 34418 for all years. 1991 and 1992 transmissions will have a threaded temperature sensor in this area of the valve body connected to the wiring harness. A replacement is available if you need it. It is item number 34437. This is the manifold pressure switch. Its stamp steel housing contains five sensitive membrane switches which provide feedback to the vehicle ECM. It does wear and fail with age. It should always be replaced during an overhaul. It is item number 34442. This small structure made into the wiring harness is a temperature sensor. This is shift solenoid A. It is also known as the 1 to 2 shift solenoid. This is shift solenoid B. Sometimes it is referred to as the 2 to 3 shift solenoid. The two solenoids are not the same and have characteristics to prevent you from installing them incorrectly. Notice that the distance from the Torx head bolt to the solenoid body is considerably different between the two. In other words, if you tried to install shift solenoid A where shift solenoid B should go, the hole in the solenoid bracket would not line up with the hole in the valve body. Also note the connectors are different. You can't hook them up wrong. The item number for shift solenoid A is 34421. The item number for shift solenoid B is 34422. This tube supplies lubrication to the case bushing and output shaft journal as well as the extension housing bushing. It is held into place by this bracket fastened by one of the valve body bolts. This arrangement is found on 1997 and later models. There is a different tube arrangement for earlier 1991 to 1996 models. That design uses a larger quarter inch diameter tube which runs from this area of the valve body to the port in the rear of the case. If the model you are working on has this type, note that there are two brackets which fasten the tube. One is located here and secured by this valve body bolt. The other retainer is at this end fastened with a valve body bolt not found on 1997 and later models. Earlier model transmissions may have a dipstick limit bracket installed in this area. Our 2003 demo version does not have one. This is the reverse band servo cover. These are the six bolts which are very similar to the pan bolts I mentioned earlier. You need to keep them separate from the pan bolts when removed later.
This is the selector shaft and parking rod assembly. Notice how the pin on the lever engages the slot in this part called the manual valve. This structure is known as the detent roller and spring. It produces the notchy click-like feel as you move the vehicle selector lever. There are 27 bolts which fasten the valve body to the case on 1997 and later models. All of them are 2 and 3 eighths of an inch or 60 millimeters long. As I mentioned earlier, there is a 28th bolt located in this area on 1991 through 1996 models. Six of them, which not only go through the valve body, but also attach the manifold pressure switch, have 8 millimeter heads. The other 21 bolts have 10 millimeter heads. There are 22 if you are working on a 1991 to 96 model. Begin disassembly by disconnecting components from the wiring harness. Start with the EPC. Use a small screwdriver to depress this barb while pulling on the connector. Use the screwdriver again to remove the connector from the TCC PWM solenoid. Carefully pry out the plastic tabs in order to release it. They may be brittle from heat and age, so only pry enough just enough to clear the barb to avoid breaking it. If the tabs break off, you may want to replace the harness assembly and we'll discuss this later. If you're working on an early 90s model, disconnect the temperature sensor located in this area. Squeeze the two tabs on the manifold pressure switch connector and pull it out. Unclip the harness from these two clamps. Pull this section of the harness from under the rear lubrication tube and let it fall to the outside of the case. Use the screwdriver to carefully lift the tab on the connector for shift solenoid A. Pull it out. Unclip the connector for shift solenoid B as we did with the TCC PWM solenoid. The last step to complete removal of the harness and this lesson is to release the case connector from the case. In order to do this, you must compress these four fingers with barbs while pushing the connector towards the inside of the case. A great tool to help is a one and a quarter inch, 12 point half inch drive socket. Place it over the connector and push in on it hard with the palm of one hand as you pull the harness with your other hand to get it started moving. Check to make sure that the retaining fingers have cleared the end of the bore. Now pull it out. Set it here in the pan. When you're ready to continue, meet me in Lesson 4.
We've spent hours discussing broken parts, old parts, dirty parts, and even where to set the old, broken, dirty parts. It's time to change gears. Let's go shopping for some shiny, new, clean parts. I'm glad you're still with me. This is 480 E-Class, Part 2, Lesson 4. Lesson 3 was about inspection of all parts and making an inventory of damaged components. This lesson will not only introduce you to new replacements for the worn parts we discovered, but also reveal the other additional necessary ingredients of a great thorough overhaul. There are three mandatory ingredients which you'll need in order to build this transmission correctly. A deluxe high quality rebuilding kit, an actuator limit valve repair kit, and a shift correction kit. Optionally, if you elect to build the high performance version of the transmission, you can substitute the Transgo reprogramming kit for the shift correction kit. The first piece of the recipe is the rebuild kit. It's called the Deluxe Super Kit. There are three to choose from at the transmission bench store depending upon the model year of the transmission. It's a fundamental minimum package of replacement parts, but not necessarily every part you will need in order to overhaul this transmission. This deluxe super kit contains a master overhaul kit, filter, shift solenoids, manifold pressure switch, several bushings, bonded rubber type pistons, and an electronic pressure control solenoid. Let's take an even closer look. The master overhaul kit portion of the Deluxe Super Kit contains all of the O-rings, D-rings, metal clad seals, lip seals, paper and metal gaskets, sealing rings, as well as an assortment of other small parts such as new hollow bolts, small filters, and a dipstick tube seal. Many of the parts are thoughtfully sub-packaged and labeled for easy identification. You also get detailed data sheets with extremely useful information such as updates, bolt torque specifications, and even check ball locations. Habla Española. The same information is in Spanish on the back of each page. The master overhaul kit also includes new friction and steel plates for the five clutch packs of the transmission. The appropriate filter is included in the kit. The 1996 through 2003 kit, by the way, actually includes both early and late filters because of the 1996 model year overlap. Shift solenoids A and B are included too. As I mentioned before in an earlier lesson, the manifold pressure switch should always be replaced. It comes in the kit. You may need to replace many of the bushings, but two of them, the pump and extension housing bushings, should always be replaced. They're in the kit. The bonded rubber overrun clutch piston and, depending upon which kit you use, the forward and direct clutch bonded rubber pistons are also included. Finally, an appropriate electronic pressure control solenoid is supplied with the kit. Along with the Deluxe Super Kit, you will also need another kit in order to fix a very common serious wear problem in the 480E transmission. If the transmission you are working on has 100,000 or more miles on it, you must remount the valve body and install a new oversized actuator limit valve. This valve is responsible for regulating fluid volume and pressure to the shift solenoids. 
the constant back and forth chafing during the cycling of the valve eventually wears this bore to the point that it will not function correctly. The results are problems such as second or third gear starts and burned up clutch packs. This Transco product is a solution to this critical issue. This kit comes with not only the reaming tools, but also six oversized valves and replacement springs. In other words, you can fix six transmissions using this one kit. This may seem wasteful and overkill for repairing only one transmission, but it is actually the lowest cost approach to fix this problem. There are alternatives such as buying a remanufactured valve body or sending your valve body out to be repaired, but the cost of the shipping alone would exceed simply buying this kit and doing it yourself. It really is important to get this kit and do this procedure. If the valve bore in your valve body isn't worn out, it's probably on the way. I will demonstrate the use of this kit for repair of the actuator limit valve during the reassembly of the transmission later. Another kit I strongly recommend is this shift correction package made by Superior Transmission Parts. It contains new replacements for worn parts of the pressure regulator assembly in the pump along with updated parts and modifications for the valve body. Let's take a closer look. This is not a performance kit. The overall objective is to replace worn parts and make updates in order to make the transmission perform as it was originally supposed to. In other words, as its name implies, the kit corrects problems. For example, an area of concern is the pressure regulator assembly in the pump. The kit comes with a new updated pressure regulator valve and spring. Another critical problem that develops with age is wear and seizing of the booster valve within its sleeve. When this happens, line pressure rises uncontrollably causing damage. It can be severe enough to actually burst the direct clutch drum. An updated booster valve and sleeve assembly is in the kit. The TCC or torque converter clutch regulator valve in the valve body needs to be updated too. The replacement valve in the kit is designed to prevent shuddering. There are several improved design end plugs which have O-rings to replace the original leak prone original ones. Other included parts are an updated small filter, four drill bits for enlarging holes in the separator plate, and one additional item to boost performance slightly. It is this spring which you may optionally install in place of the original accumulator valve spring for firmer shifts appropriate for heavy duty towing. I install this kit in every 4L80E that I rebuild, and again, I strongly urge you to do so too. The only exception not to is if the transmission will be used in extreme performance applications where I install the Transco High Performance Reprogramming Kit instead of the Superior Kit. If your goal is to build an extremely firm and fast shifting transmission capable of handling engine output levels of 5, 6, 7, 800 horsepower and more, you'll need to upgrade to this kit. It will not only correct a few issues with the 4 lae but also reprogram the transmission to have the personality needed in competition, such as at the drag strip, tractor pull, or mud bogging. This is the kit we will install later during the reassembly. Like the Superior kit, it has replacement components for the pressure regulator system in the pump. You get a new booster valve and sleeve, as well as springs, a spacer, and washer to substantially increase line pressure. 
This kit also has updated end plugs which have O-rings for much better sealing. Features unique to this kit include stiffer 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 accumulator springs, 16 higher pressure direct clutch spring cage springs, very thick intermediate clutch snap ring, a high strength bolt for fastening the overdrive clutch housing, other valve body springs, and even several drill bits for modifying the separator plate and pump. Valve body to case and separator plate gaskets are included too. Here are the individual items which we found to be damaged that are not included in the kits. If you'll recall, the Overdrive Planet Gear Carrier has severe wear to its bushing journal and needs to be replaced. This is the replacement for 2001 and later transmissions which have the smaller 196 thousandths of an inch rollers in the one-way roller clutch. It is item number 34580A. We also need a new input shaft. It is item number 34670EA. Unfortunately, we cannot reuse the forward clutch drum because of the ceiling ring board damage. The replacements for 1997 and later models which use bonded steel and rubber pistons like our 2003 demo transmission need item number 34554EA. The replacement 34 element intermediate sprag assembly is item number A34652A. Our old reverse band was glazed and burned with pieces of the lining missing. The item number for the new one is 34024E. There is one more part we'll use during reassembly which I haven't mentioned yet. It is a unique case bushing made by the Sonax company. The original style case bushing has a tendency to become loose and walk out of its bore. This Sonax redesigned replacement has a flange to prevent it from moving out of the bore. I highly recommend you upgrade to this part. It is item number S34064BA. That's about it for our new parts shopping excursion. In the next lesson, we'll begin the reassembly.